Hey, what's happening, everybody? Jim here. Welcome, welcome back. So today in MuseScore, it's all about the tempo track. That's right. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to learn how to create a tempo track template, fairly easy, and then figure out what sounds you want and then how to customize it. Because if you do pick drum set, you don't need a tempo track that's five lines, unless if you want to. What are the benefits? Well, you don't have to go crazy. You can pick the sound that you want to hear over and over again. You can go ahead and put an accent to a phrase. For instance, if you're an educator and you need to have students listen to a feel and it's a jazz tune, so you want to accent on two and four. Uh, three, mix meter. Wow, you could go ahead and really demonstrate the strong and weak beats. And there's a lot more, but we need to get going. So let's go. All right, step one, create a new score. I title it Tempo Track Template. Really important here, when you're going to go ahead and start using this template and you want to compose something for piano and flute or whatever, you're going to go ahead, click on Tempo Track Template, and then you're going to save as piano and flute. So then you'll have two different files. You don't want to override the template because if you do, you'll have to make a new template. I thought that was important to bring up. We're gonna click next here, and then we're gonna bypass this area because we're gonna go right to percussion. Now, you'll see this common. If you wanna know all the different percussion sounds, you wanna go to all instruments. Definitely sample the sounds, I think, before you do the template. I'm gonna pick drum set today because drum set poses some problems and some of us might wanna use drum set. Me, personally, I don't use drum set as a tempo track. I usually use triangle or maybe a tight shaker sound because of shortcuts, and we'll talk about that in a second. Add drum set to score, click finish. Uh, we'll just keep everything as is. So our tempo track doesn't need to have five lines, so we're gonna right mouse click, and then we're gonna go to staff part properties. And you'll see where the lines are. We're gonna go ahead and make that one. And then for my tempo track, I like to have the scale smaller, especially if you're writing for a lot of instruments. I'm gonna go to 90%, click apply, Oh, then down here, part properties, you can type in tempo track. And then sometimes I just call that TT. Whoops. Click apply. The next part, this is kind of where it gets a bit beefy because we have to edit the drum set. If we want to use a snare sound, it's default, it's A, and you'll see it down there. We want it on a line. If you've seen some of my other videos, I talk a lot about this. I'm gonna pick, let's say, a cross stick and maybe a hi-hat sound. We're gonna go ahead, end key, click on edit drum set, and then we're gonna go ahead and now find side stick. Side stick, you can see here in the voicings. All right, now that we're in edit drum set, we have the side stick here. We're gonna make this staff line to zero. Zero will be right on the line. We'll keep um, the stems up. We can keep the cross if you want, not a big deal. Shortcut, I would be careful with this. If you go ahead and click A, um, and if you're writing for drum set in the score, the shortcut will change. So you wanna definitely figure something out on what shortcut you might not use. For now, I'll just call it E, and I'll click Apply. And let's go for a closed hi-hat sound. There it is, I have it as G and it looks like it's default voice one, and then I'm gonna make this zero. I'm gonna click apply, and then I'm gonna click okay. Let's put it to the test. I have the E and the G key. I'm gonna now press E, for, yep, and then the G key for the hi-hat. I have two measures here with two different sounds, which could be useful. I'm gonna have the shift key down, and I'm just gonna lasso those two measures, control C, control V. I'm gonna demonstrate what I use for a tempo track. I use, normally the triangle has the muted and open sound built in, no worries about shortcuts. So just take a listen at measure three, beat three. Now I'm gonna add in tempo changes and I'm gonna build in a little retardando and I'm gonna add it to the tempo track which will apply to the whole score. So we'll go to tempo changes, Move that out of the way. I am not gonna write retardando in there. That comes in later. I don't need to put anything in that tempo track. I'm gonna click apply for now. So let's hear how that sounds. So this is the melody we started again, so I'm gonna need to fix that. And there's a little tip that I'm gonna share because I know I got crazy about it when I couldn't figure it out. That's not what I intend. So let's say I'm gonna switch it back to 120. But will it go back to 120? Or is the plugin taking charge? Let's find out. All 
I knew it wasn't going to. And before you go crazy, what you need to do is take the first initial tempo. This is what I do. Control C and then go to their control V. It's still anchored to beat one, I promise you. All right, here we go. Let's see. Good thing I'm not doing this live because I'll just edit this. Phew. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add retardando in there and I already have it built in my text. So I just drag and drop it and there you go. Hey, thanks for watching and thanks for supporting the channel. If you like my content, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment below if this video is helpful for you and if you plan on creating your own tempo track. That would be great. Until next time, please take care and happy music making. Bye for now.